Hello, hope you're doing well. Uh, today I just wanted to go through and kind of show what my process is on creating a time lapse in Photoshop. So I'm right here in Lightroom first off, and I have a series of photos selected. I have these photos of this butte down in southern Utah, and I am going to turn this into a time lapse. So I have, let's see, what do I got? I got 385 photos here. Um, it's nothing crazy, it's just, it's kind of a time lapse of the sun coming up and hitting that butte and the clouds uh, moving over that, that structure. So the first thing that we want to do is just make sure that we have all of our photos edited. So I've actually already gone through, just for the sake of time, and edited all of these photos. You'll notice that some of these at the beginning are a little dark, and I did that on purpose. Um, but I went through and I added uh, the same edit to all of these photos, and then I came up here to my settings tab and I hit this match total exposures on all of these photos. I make sure that all of those are selected, hit match total exposures, and then that will help to make sure that all of your photos are exposed evenly, and that way you won't have any, you know, kind of jitteriness with the light um, throughout, throughout your time lapse. So, have everything edited in here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just, uh, I'm gonna select this first one, and I'm gonna come all the way to the end, and I'm going to hit shift, select the last one so uh, like I said I, I kept this kind of dark on purpose um, you don't have to do that there are other ways to do that but this is more so about how to actually process the time-lapse in Photoshop rather than um, you know I guess how to make it look good <laughs> so okay so I have everything selected here and we're actually going to export these first so um, when we're putting these into Photoshop, we need to put them in as JPEG. So we can't put the raw files into Photoshop and do this with the raw files. We have to do, do this through the JPEGs. So we have to export all of these first, um, which does take a little bit of time. So we're going to hit export and we'll select a, uh, let's see, we'll keep it on, on Capital Reef here and we'll hit new folder and we'll just do view time lapse. And we'll hit create, choose, and then we want to make sure that our uh, file naming structure um, is set up in a way that Photoshop can read it in a, uh, I guess, in chronological order. So what I always do is I come up to uh, custom name and sequence. So that way I can type in, you know, whatever I want. So we can do FB time lapse and then it'll put a one after this. You always want to do custom name sequence. If you do custom name um, and you do the same name on all of them, it's going to have your, your first photo um, not have any kind of uh, number attached to it, so it's not going to be in order. Basically, this is just a way to uh, make a short, making, making sure that when Photoshop reads all your files, that it's actually reading that first file. Because um, normally, if say if you did this on custom name and you put in your own name, that first, that first file, like I said, won't have any kind of a number system attached to it. So it'll throw it, when you put it through Photoshop, it'll throw it all the way to the very end of your sequence. So you wanna have custom name and sequence, that way everything starts off um, with a number at the beginning. You have that example down there, FBTL-1, and then everything after this one, um, you know, FBTL-1, FBTL you know, so on and so forth. So hit export, and then we'll give that uh, just a few minutes to do that. Again, there's 385 files, so it'll take a couple minutes. Okay, so we have all of our photos exported from Lightroom. So we're gonna come down to our Finder tab just to check those out. Um, as you can see, we have our folder that we made here, and then we have all of our um, files all listed down in sequential order uh, from 1 all the way to 385 so just how we want um, also just to note this is done on a Mac um, and so I, I know that Windows doesn't have a finder folder but I mean that's just uh, the equivalent to that is just going into your files and um, you know finding the folder that you put all your uh, files in so so now we're gonna go into Photoshop. So I'm gonna open my Photoshop uh, app. We're gonna come up to File. We're gonna hit Open. Then we're going to navigate over to our uh, photos that we just exported from Lightroom. Okay, so once we have those photos, 
what we're gonna do here this is important to note but we're going to click just the first one only the first photo and then we're gonna come down here to image sequence and by clicking image sequence we are by default in a way selecting all of the photos in this file so uh, by clicking that image sequence box Photoshop is going to recognize that we want to put all of these images um, in sequential order into a timeline basically so we're gonna make sure our image sequence box is selected make sure that first photo is selected and we're going to hit open and this will take well actually let's pick our frame rate uh, we'll do this one in Let's see, we'll actually do 30 for this one. So we'll hit OK. And I typically pick my frame rate based on kind of how long I want the video to be. Um, most of my time lapses I just do in 24, just because most of the videos I do are in 24 frames a second. You also need to keep in mind that whatever your frames per second is, is going to determine how long your time lapse is going to be. So for example, we have 385 photos and we have a timeline that is set to 24 frames a second we're going to be pushing through 24 of those frames per second so uh, if you want this to be a little bit of a slower timeline or excuse me a slower time lapse which is this is going to be you want to set that at 24 frames a second um, obviously you can speed it up in post that's totally fine i've done that before and it works totally fine but um if you do want it to be a little bit of a quicker time lapse then you can set it to 60 frames a second or even 30 um and then that'll just speed up you know how fast uh, those files are moving through your timeline so we have this set to 30 though for this one so okay so we're all set up here in Photoshop um, what I'm going to do just so I can get a visual on what we're doing is we want to come up to our window tab and we will hit timeline now what this is going to do is just show us down here at the bottom um, essentially the full clip um, of what we have put together here so um, and you can by hitting the space bar or even you know some of these uh, functions down here on the bottom you can play this and you can you get an idea of what this looks like it doesn't always play very well just because a lot of these photos have to be rendered individually um, this is a very very large file right here that this is set up so it's it's very slow sometimes um, and one thing that you can do to uh, kind of combat that is you can come up here to image you can go to canvas size you can actually set this to whatever canvas you want so so this one we're gonna set to a 4k resolution so we're gonna set this to 38 40 wide and then 2160 pixels high and then we'll hit ok and then we'll hit proceed uh, just is just saying that the new canvas size um, will be smaller than the current one and clipping will occur but this is totally fine so hit proceed okay so obviously this is cropped in a lot Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to obviously when we set those parameters down to that 4k resolution um, it just cropped in really tight so now we just need to fix um, the crop on our photo so all the info is still there it's just outside of the bounds of those uh, parameters that we set so to combat this I'm gonna make sure we're zoomed out just so that we can um, get a good view of everything and then I'm going to hit command T and now you can see the actual parameters uh, from our original photo. So we're gonna crop this in. Um, not quite like that. We'll go just like that. Just make sure we're fitting into that canvas. So and then we'll hit enter. And there we go. So that is a smaller file now. So now it should have a little bit of an easier time playing through the timeline here at the bottom. So we'll just hit space. And as you can see, it's very slowly playing. Um, it's not gonna play very quick while we're in Photoshop. Um, obviously, once you export it, it'll play a lot quicker. So I usually don't bother to, uh, yeah, you can see at the bottom, it's running at um, a frame rate of 1.97. So it's not moving very fast. Um, so we're just gonna pause that and not worry about it. Okay, now what we're gonna do is just export. Um, before we export though, I do wanna note, you can make adjustments to uh, your video file here. Um, in that case you would just come over here to your layer panel and you can select any kind of layer adjustments um, and you can do all the editing you want on this video uh, you can do this in Photoshop or you can do it in whatever your video editing software is I usually do that within DaVinci Resolve so I would for this video for example I would export as is and then 
any kind of color grading or anything I wanted to do for it, I would just do that in DaVinci Resolve. So you can do that here. Arguably, you can have a lot more control over what you're able to do here in Photoshop than you do in DaVinci Resolve, but it's already mostly edited. All, all that really need, is needed is just color grading. So I'm not gonna worry about that here. Um, so I'm just going to go to my file. I'm gonna hit export. And then we're gonna come down here to render video. Okay, then we're gonna select our location. So right now I have mine already selected to go to a time lapses uh, folder on my hard drive. And I'm just gonna rename this real quick. VTO, whoops, missed that one, TL. Okay, and then I'm just gonna make sure that my, my size on here is correct as well. So uh, I'm gonna come over to size, I'm gonna type, typed in 3840, and then I'm going to type in 2160. So you can also come down here and just select document size, I guess that's, that's a uh, quicker way to do it. So, okay, uh, we have everything named, we have our location that we're going to, we have the correct size picked, and then now all we have to do is just hit render. And it'll take a minute to render. Um, it won't take as long as exporting from Lightroom, but it will take um, a few minutes to actually export and render the video. Okay, so that video is rendered and exported. So we're gonna come down here to our Finder tab and we're gonna go find that video and see how it looks. So this looks pretty good. So I don't see any kind of jitteriness in the exposure or anything like that. You know, there's no flashing or, or anything that's going on in the video. Um, it plays very smooth, looks really good. Um, like I said, if I were to do any kind of color grading on this now, I would just do it inside of the video software that I'm using. So um, very easy. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. This is a very simple process, um, especially in Photoshop. It's, it's so, so easy. Um, it's just a little bit, you just need a little bit of patience just because it kind of takes a little bit of time sometimes. Yeah, let me know if you have any questions and we will see you in the next video. Bye.